Hi everyone, Krista Cowan here with another episode of the Barefoot Genealogist. Today we continue our series of um, episodes about Family Tree Maker 2012. We're going to talk about reports today, but reports is so huge and there's so many of them. As a matter of fact, if you could conceive of the type of report that you want, Family Tree Maker could probably create it for you. Um, we don't have enough time to cover all of the reports, and so today I've chosen to focus on one very specific report. It's the data error report. Now you may or may not have seen this before. We're going to go over it in quite a bit of detail today. And I just want you to know that this is a report that has the ability to um, take a look at your data and to really help you clean up some of those problem areas in your tree. It'll help you recognize if you've made just typing mistakes or if there are some actual um, integrity issues in your data, like maybe you've imported a GEDCOM from a cousin or you've um, attached something from somebody else's tree without looking at it real closely. And this can help you identify some of those problem spots. And it could just be that some of those problem spots are what are causing some of those brick walls that you're running into. You have data entered and when you go to look at it and do further research, without some of that context, that data could be really wrong and that's why you're having a problem um, doing further research. So we're going to look at that data error report um, today. Let's dive in. We're going to spend um, quite a bit of time on some slides here just because I want to make sure that you can see and read exactly what is in this report before we jump over to Family Tree Maker and I show you exactly how to find it, how to generate it, um, and what it looks like. So there's a couple of sections in the data error report. Um, it allows you to generate, I didn't even count them, but a couple dozen um, kinds of um, error reports on kinds of errors. So the first one is any name that contains an invalid character. So you accidentally hit a, hit a period or a, an apostrophe as you were typing the name. It'll just pull those up, let you review them, make sure that those are accurate. If they're accurate, fine. If they're not, you can go ahead and change them. Sometimes, um, again, we just hit random characters. Um, sometimes those dashes are misplaced. Sometimes we thought a name was hyphenated. It really shouldn't be. Um, that just gives us a list of all the names in our database that contain that so that we can review them. Now, this one is a little bit trickier. Um, we can generate a report that shows us all of the people in our database where their name contains a nickname. Now, I have um, inherited GEDCOM files from cousins and from aunts and uncles, and every once in a while I'll find a whole string of nicknames entered in the name field. Most often it's, they're in parentheses or in quotes, um, and sometimes they do that because they want to make sure that we know right up front that this is um, how, how we're likely to find this person in the records. But with Family Tree Maker, we actually have um, an also known as field. So there's some options there to put that nickname in other fields where it will still generate on reports, where it will still search appropriately without having it in the formal name field. Again, this is just a way to generate a report that shows you everybody in your database whose name may contain a nickname so that you can review if it's entered um, the way you want it entered. If you want to remove it and put it in another field, you can do that as well. There's also one for names that contain titles. So again, uh, with old software programs, a lot of times um, the title was entered straight into the name field. Now there is actually a separate field for that title. And so if you've got that title in the name field, Reverend, Doctor, um, you know, Mr., Mrs., however, whatever the title may be, you can review those and then go put them in the appropriate field, remove them from that name field. Again, that's going to help your search be a little bit cleaner if you put that title in the appropriate field rather than leaving it there in the name field. And if you want that title printed on pedigree charts or group sheets, you can include that, um, that title field rather than having it in the name field. Now this one is a little bit trickier and we'll actually do a demo using this particular uh, data error or person error. Um, this allows you to generate a list of everybody where the wife's surname is the same as the husband's surname. Now in some cases, many in my family, um, they're, it's legitimate. The wife's maiden name is the same as the husband's. Um, every once in a while, it's, they're not really related. <laughs> they just happen to have the same surname. I have a couple of Joneses like that. But 
uh, in my case, a lot of times they were marrying second and third cousins, and so the wife's maiden name was the same. But you'll want to generate a list of those anyway, just to check. Some people, when they got started in family history, didn't know you were supposed to enter the wife's maiden name um, in, the, in the name field, and so you may have some old data in there. Uh, a lot of people used to enter you know, Mrs. and then the husband's name if they didn't know the wife's name. Again, that's not necessarily a, a wrong, but it does create some issues with search when you, if you don't know the name, it's clearer, in my opinion, or cleaner to not have that name entered at all than to just have Mrs. and the husband's name. So this just generates a list of all cases where the wife's surname is the same as the husband's. Now, this one isn't really a data error, but what it is, is it's a way to pull a list of everybody in your database where you haven't found a birth date for them yet. Now, this is, that, this is where the birth date is completely blank, not just that you've estimated it and entered something, but this is just a really cool way to pull up a quick list of people for whom you need to do some further research. Uh, a similar report is the, the marriage date missing report. And then this one I love, um, and I actually ran this one this morning, just making sure my family tree maker was all up and working and running before we got started. Um, anybody in your tree that is unattached, that means they don't have parents, they don't have children, they don't have a spouse. They have no attachments. They're just a floating person in your tree. That happens sometimes when we enter somebody and then get distracted or when we're switching. You know, we, we've had somebody in our database and we realize this person is not really the child of these people. And so we disconnect them and then don't reconnect them to the appropriate parents. Or It, it happens. So that report is a good report to get in the habit of running every once in a while just to make sure you don't have any floating people people in your family tree um, that you intended to merge with someone else or, or that you unattached and forgot to reattach. So um, then the last, I think this is the last one, there might be one more, the last person error is the children out of order. I don't know about you, but this drives me crazy when I find a family, especially when they're those large families, and you know, six or seven of the children are out of birth order when I'm viewing them. There is a simple button I can just click to stick them in order, but if I don't know which children are out of order, this gives me a list of those families or those children that need to be put in the proper birth order in their family. And this happens mostly because we enter lists of children. Like say, I find a family and um, I find an obituary maybe for the father, and so I list all the children based on the obituary, but it isn't until I do further research that I know the birth order of those children. And then I go and I find their birth dates and I fill that information in. And then I just forget or get distracted or whatever and don't put those children in the correct order. So this just allows me to do that and clean things up a little bit. Okay, so those are the person errors. Then we have a whole series of what we call date errors that we can check for. And these are gonna, there's a lot of them, so hang on, right? Um, anybody where the birth date is after the father's death date, you can pull a list of those people from your database. Now, sometimes this is legitimate, right? If the mother got pregnant and was pregnant when the father died, then chances are the child is going to have a birth date after the father's death date. But this allows you to check, to look at that list and say, you know, look, this child was born more than nine months after the father's death date. Maybe I have this child attached to the incorrect father. Um, maybe I have the father's death date incorrect. Maybe I have the child's birth date incorrect. So again, it just generates a list of those people where their birth date is after their father's death date so that you can check and verify. These next few have to do with the age of the parents. And again, they're just kind of some general guidelines. It is possible for men to father children after the age of 80. It's just not highly likely. And so you can generate a list of everybody where the fathers was over 80 when they were born. You can generate um, a list of people where their own birth date is after their own death date. You can generate a list of people whose birth date is after their mother's death date. That one, not nearly as possible as being born after a father's death date. You can generate a list of children where the birth date was after the mother was age 60. Again, um, possible, but not very, not very likely. You can also generate a list of people who were born before their father or mother were age 13. 
Again, all of these are just generating a list of people in your database who meet this requirement so that you can look at them, review them, and determine if you've entered it accurately. Sometimes it's just because I've hit the wrong key, right? Instead of typing 1837, I accidentally typed 1937 or 1737. Um, I was entering the information and it's a data entry error on my part. And if I've kept good notes, I should be able to just go in and fix that immediately. Sometimes it's because I attached information from someone else's tree or I inherited a GEDCOM and I wasn't as careful in reviewing that information before I attached it or imported it into my database. And so I've just attached information that is either totally wrong or that somebody else, where somebody else made a mistake and didn't catch their own mistake. So this just gives you a list of um, people in your tree that need some closer examination, places where you need to go to look and say, you know what, I've got some weird things happening here. I've got a bunch of children who were born after their mother died. How is that possible? What's going on here? A um, couple more here of date, a couple more date errors here. Um, burial date, where a burial date is before a death date where their age at time of death was greater than 120. Again, possible, maybe, but not very likely. And so um, we need to just check those. Make sure you didn't type something incorrect or, or import an incorrect set of information. The last set of date errors that you can um, pull up have to do mostly with events. So an event is any event. Birth, marriage, and death are events. Military service, immigration, residence, any kind of an event date that you have entered for a person, um, this is what it's comparing against. So the first one here is the event date occurs before the birth date. It's hard to have a residence or a marriage or any other event in their life before they were born. And so this just pulls a list, again, of those people who have an event date before a birth date. That allows you to just check. Make sure you didn't make a mistake in entering one of those. An invalid date, so any kind of a date that's not valid an invalid date um, would be, a, like for example, the 29th of February on a non-leap year. <laughs> that would be an invalid date because no such date exists. Um, the 31st of a month where there are only 30 days. Now, most of this occurs when you've used an old software program that didn't have the ability to um, check for those kinds of things, and you've imported that data into your Family Tree Maker program. Family Tree Maker actually now, when you enter a date, it immediately set, tells you if the date is valid or not. So if you've imported old data, also if you have weird characters or um, any, anything unusual or unexpected in that date field, that's gonna provide that information on that event date not valid report. A marriage date after a death date or after a spouse's death date. A marriage date before a person or their spouse was 13 years old. Um, again, possible, maybe, but not very likely. So it's just a way to give you a range of information that you can verify with further research. Okay, let's actually go into Family Tree Maker now, and I'll show you where you're going to find this report and what this report is going to look at. So this is my Family Tree Maker. Now, one of the things that um, you need to understand is that my file is fairly large. I do a lot of descendancy research. And so I end up with um, lots and lots and lots of kids, especially when my f the people in my family were having 10 and 12 and 13 children. It gets very large very quickly. Um, I've also been doing this for 20 plus years. So, so I have this huge file. And so I'm going to be really careful about not running every single report because it takes a little bit of time to run it against my file size. Here's where you're going to find this report. Right up here, you have a Publish button. So you're going to go ahead and click on that Publish button, and it's going to take you to a page that looks like this. The data error report is, going to, is a person report. So you're going to see charts, which is where you have all your pedigree charts and family group sheets. You're going to have genealogy reports, um, such as your Anantafel report and a descendancy report that you can run. Um, then you're going to have your person reports. Uh, these are reports about individuals. Um, you can create a, a report about a specific individual or timelines or all sorts of different, like I said, any report you could possibly imagine, either Family Tree Maker already has it or you can create it as a custom report. We're looking specifically today at the data error report and here's where you're going to find that. So I'm going to click over here on create report. Now you'll notice it's going to take it a minute 
because again, it's, it's creating it based on whatever my last settings were. While it's doing that, let me just review with you a couple of the options that you have over here to select. So let's hop back over here. Um, the first option you're gonna have when you're creating your report is to include all or exclude all and then select specific. So all of those options, we just, or all of those types of um, data errors we just went over, right? That three slide list of things. <laughs> I could search for every single one of those things across my entire database. Now remember I said my database is huge, so I probably don't want to do that. It would probably take a really, really, really long time to run that report. But if your database is not that large, you could do that. Or you have the option of just running um, these reports against specific groups of people. So I could say, you know, here in Family Tree Maker, I'm on Harriet Jesse Meek. I could say run that report, include all the different possible data errors, and run it against her immediate family. So I could have that option. Or I could run it against a set of selected individuals. So maybe rather than running it against my entire tree, maybe I want to run it against all of the direct, um, all of the ancestors of my grandfather. Right? So instead of running it against all everybody on my mom's side of the family and all the cousins and descendants, maybe I just want to run it against my grandfather's pedigree. So I can do that. There's lots of different ways I can mix it up. So immediate families of selected individuals, of the selected individual, selected individuals in my tree, or all individuals in my tree. Those are kind of the options I have to play with. And then I can include all data errors, or I can exclude all data errors, and then just pick one or two at a time. Again, here's what that looks like. So here I have the option to do immediate family. That would be the immediate family of whoever the person is showing up here at the top. I can do all individuals in my database, or I can do selected individuals. And when I do that, it says, okay, who do you want to look at? So in my case, maybe I want to look at, like I said, here's my grandfather, and I want all of his descendants. I want to check all of them. There's only 50 of them. And... I want to check them for whatever the specific error is that I'm interested in. This first little icon right here um, on the left, it's the top left of the little side panel. Hope that makes sense if you can't see. The top left of the side panel, this first little um, error um, icon is where you're going to find all of your data errors. So when you first pull it up, it's going to look like this. Everything's going to be checked. You'll see here in the top panel, those are all the person errors that we covered. Down here in the bottom panel is all the data errors that we covered. So again, you can just run this report against everyone in your database, all errors. If you have a large database, that will take a long time. Or I can click exclude all, it unchecks everything, and then I can say, you know, what I'm really interested in is seeing if there are, is there anybody in my tree where the wife's surname is the same as the husband's surname. And I want to do that against everybody in my tree. And so now you'll notice down here at the bottom, it's, it's working, it's checking my database, it's running through and making sure um, th that it can pull a list of all of the women where their name is the same as, where their surname is the same as their husband's surname. So I have that option. Now there's a few other little clicky things here. Don't worry about them. I just use the defaults. If you're an explorer when it comes to computers, feel free to click on them and play with them. But again, just note that sometimes this report takes a little bit of time to run. Um, and so if you've got a big database, just be patient. It's doing its thing, I promise. And you can tell by just looking at this little bar down here at the very bottom on the right to see what's going on. Now I'm hoping, I timed this this morning, it shouldn't take more than about a minute, maybe a minute and a half to run this particular report against my whole database because I really want to show you just one or two last things before we're done here today. Here we go, perfect. Okay, so here's what the report looks like. So remember I ran a report for all women where their surname is the same as their husband's surname and I ran it against my entire database. You'll notice down here it tells me that I have five pages of these. Um, it lists the name of the person and you'll notice they're in alphabetical order. So it lists their name and then it also lists exactly what the possible, potential, error is. 
Remember again, it could be that their surname is the same as their husband's surname. Um, if they married a cousin or whatever. But I need to double check that. So one of the things that I can do is I can print this list and that icon's up here on the top right. Or one of the things that I've also done before rather than printing um, and dealing with that, I can share it and I can export it as a PDF. What that allows me to do is it creates a whole, set, it, it pops up a PDF in a separate window. In my case, I use two screens. I have a second monitor that I hook my computer into so I can have this data error report on one screen as a PDF and then I can come back in here to my people and start working my way through this list to see whose last name needs to be deleted. If I don't know their maiden name, I can just remove the surname altogether, and that's actually preferable to having her husband's surname in there. It's preferable to have a blank surname if you don't know the maiden name, because that tells you right away you need to be looking for that maiden name. If you have a surname in there, you don't know um, at a glance whether or not you need to know her maiden name or not. So this allows me to do that. If I export this to a PDF, it allows me to do that back and forth, be either between two screens or between two windows. Because this report, as soon as I go over here to my people screen, like I don't have access to it without toggling back and forth. And that becomes a little bit cumbersome. So either print this report so that you can check your way through it, or like I said, I'll share mine, export it to a PDF, so that I then have it available um, as another window and I can toggle back and forth between the two. Woo, that was a lot of information to cover. Hopefully you caught it all. That particular report has helped me clean up so, so many things in my database. Um, like I said, those children out of order drive me crazy. Now I have a list that looks like um, that list of women in my database whose surnames are the same as their husband should only be about three and a half pages long. Um, those are the ones that I know are legitimately the same. So it looks like I've got maybe a page, page and a half of, of people to check. Lots of um, date mistakes where I've typed the wrong date and it just helps me clean those up. And then when I do, once I clean those dates up, all of a sudden I'm getting hints and my searching is a lot better because I've got the correct dates and correct information on those people. Hopefully that's helpful to you. If you have any questions, as always, if you're watching this live, I'll be available on chat in just a few minutes. If you're watching an archived version of this on YouTube, please feel free to leave a comment. I do check those and will respond as necessary. If you have other um, topics you'd like to see discussed in future live stream broadcasts, I'm actually putting together the October calendar in the next day or two. So please feel free to email me at ask at ancestry.com. Uh, I do look at those, take those into consideration as I put together the calendar. You can then check our Facebook page. There's a little events tab that you can find right underneath the main picture on the Facebook page. And that will give you a list of all future times and dates and topics for our live stream presentations. Until next time, this is Krista Cowan. Have fun climbing your family tree.